What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video we're going to be talking about HTML elements and attributes. Specifically we're going to talk about what these elements and attributes are and more importantly how we can know what elements we can use and which attributes apply to them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, so there's not really any prerequisites for this video, but to get the most out of it, I'm gonna recommend watching the video I'm going to link inside of the card up here in the corner or down in the description, just to familiarize yourself with what HTML is and uh, have a little bit better understanding of how it's used and why it's important. But by no means do you have to be an expert, you just have to have a general understanding of what the language is used for, which I cover in that video. All right, so to recap some of the information in that video, HTML is made up of tags, and typically there is a start tag and an end tag, thus usually coming in pairs. So we can see this example here with the paragraph. We have an opening P tag, which is uh, a paragraph in HTML, followed by some text content that says this is a paragraph, and then we have a closing P tag here, which basically takes the form of the tag name preceded by a forward slash. All right, and so any tag that can have content inside of it, um, so you can either have text inside of it or other elements, uh, anything that can have other elements inside of it is going to need a closing tag. That way the browser knows where that content ends. Now HTML tags can also be self-closing, which essentially means that they don't contain any content. The tag itself is just a tag and it's used to render something onto the screen, uh, but it doesn't have anything inside of it, doesn't contain any text, doesn't contain other elements, it's just the element itself. And a good example of that is an input tag. So an input tag is something that you would use on a form, for example, to put in maybe your first name or last name, an email address, things like that. It doesn't contain any content inside of the tag. And so for that reason, it is self-closing, which we can see indicated by this forward slash at the end of the tag here. Now, as per the HTML5 spec, this is actually not required. It's just kind of a habit that I've done since I've been doing this for a very long time, uh, but it's totally okay to get rid of that and just have the tag itself be just the name of the tag. And so it kind of looks just like the opening tag. It looks a little bit weird, but the browser intrinsically knows, hey, this thing is an input tag. It never contains any content, so I don't need to worry about that tag being closed essentially. So the forward slash is just kind of a leftover uh, relic from the HTML or XHTML days, uh, which you can learn a little bit more about by checking out this video that I have up in the right hand corner. All right, so the tags themselves then are used to create elements. So the tags themselves aren't elements. Uh, however, when they are rendered to the screen uh, inside of the browser, they essentially become elements. So the use of HTML tags essentially creates elements that, that we can work with and interact with on a web page. All right, so now let's talk about attributes. So all HTML elements can have attributes and attributes are used to change the behavior or add information to an element. Now the types of attributes that you can use really depend on the element that you are using, uh, but there are a certain set of attributes which are referred to as global attributes that can apply to any element. So if we take a look at the paragraph examples, just a slightly more complex uh, example than we saw before, we can see that we've added an ID here set to the text of my paragraph. So an attribute always takes the form of attribute name equals and then some value. Um, there are attributes where you can just add the attribute to the tag itself. Disabled is one that you can use for input elements that will disable that element on the form and you don't need to actually provide any type of value, you just need to add the attribute itself. So there's a handful of those where you don't need to specify any type of value, uh, but for the most part, they're going to take on this form of name equals some kind of value. And the value is gonna always be wrapped in quotes, so that way we know uh, where that attribute value stops and ends. And you can have multiple attributes on an HTML element. So you can have an ID, and you can have a class, and you can have basically any amount of attributes that that HTML element supports. Now there are element specific attributes, which you can only use on a particular type of element. So for example, down here, we can see that this input does have an ID, which is the same as the paragraph. Notice that the ID is different because per the HTML standard, uh, you can only have one unique ID per page. So obviously it wouldn't make sense for this paragraph uh, with the ID of my paragraph to be used as an input. Uh, that doesn't really make any sense, uh, but just know when you use an ID, it needs to be unique uh, across that page that you're looking at. But notice it also has this type equals text, and this type attribute is specific to an input element, um, and it takes 
different values that you can use for the input type that you are trying to use. And so a couple of different input types, there's type text, which is gonna be a text box. There's type radio, which is going to render a radio button. And there's a several others. So the big question is, how do we know what elements we can use? And more importantly, how do we know which attributes that we can use on those elements? And for that, we're gonna take a look at and introduce something called the MDN web docs, which can be found at this URL here, https colon slash slash developer.mozilla.org. All right, so here I am on the MDN web docs page, formerly known as the Mozilla Developer Network. And basically this is the de facto documentation for anything related to web technology. So specifically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, but there is some other good stuff in here as well. And what we can do is go over to references and you can see that it has all of the various web technologies uh, broken down by section. And specifically what we're gonna do is look at this HTML section here. And this will give us all kinds of information about HTML. So you can get a brief overview. There's an introduction to HTML, talks about multimedia, discusses HTML tables. So there's a lot of information in here as it relates to working with HTML. However, specifically what we're interested in is this section down here that says references. And you'll notice that there is a section for HTML elements. There's a section for global attributes and there's a section for attributes. So we're mainly gonna be focused on these first two. Um, because the global attributes, like we've mentioned, could be used with any HTML element. However, this attribute section doesn't give us uh, an attribute list breakdown per element. So for that, we need to look at the element section itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick and click on elements. And we can see here are all the various elements that we can use in an HTML web page. So for example, let's say if I wanted information on the anchor tag, which is the A here, this is used to create links in an HTML document. We can see that it gives us the name of the tag. So it's gonna be the anchor element, the A HTML element or anchor element with its href attribute. So again, this is something that's going to be specific to an anchor tag, and there's a few other tags that can use it as well, but it's not applicable across every single tag. So you're not gonna see a paragraph, for example, with an href, that wouldn't make any sense. But we can see that this creates a hyperlink to web pages, files, email addresses, locations in the same page, or essentially anything else a URL can address. So there's some examples down here. What's really cool, um, as of more recently, there's lots of interactive demos on this site. And you can see here is the anchor element. So opening tag, we have our href attribute, which is where our link's going to go. So this link is going to go to something called example.com. The content inside is usually text, but it can also be an image or pretty much anything else that you want to make a clickable link. And this one is closed off by a closing uh, anchor tag here. And a closing tag always takes the form of opening angle bracket, forward slash, tag name, closing angle bracket. So what's really cool here is we can see all of the attributes that we can use with this tag. So we can see there's one called attribution SRC. There's one called download. Here is the href and it gives you a description of each. So the href is the URL that the hyperlink points to. Links are not restricted to HTTP based URLs. They can be any URL scheme supported by browsers. You can specify the target. So how you want that link to open. So self will open in the current browser. Blank will usually open a new tab. You can also pass in the type. So if you're passing in a link to a document, for example, you can pass in a hint to the URL's format with whatever that contents MIME type is, which just helps the browser understand what it is that you're linking to. And you can see there's also some deprecated attributes here as well. So lots of information. Uh, for the most part, you know, you're not gonna really use a lot of these other attributes uh, for an anchor element. The most common one's going to be an href, but this is how you would see which attributes that you can use for a particular HTML element. So for example, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Let's take a look at our paragraph that we saw before. So let's find our P tag and we can click on attributes over here just to jump down to the attribute section. And notice that this one, this element only includes the global attributes. So a paragraph tag doesn't have any element specific attributes that you can use with it. Uh, only the global attributes apply. And so you can see we have a link to the global attributes here. But what I'm gonna do is go back up to the sidebar so we can see just how to get there. We can see this global attribute section. So if we go ahead and click into here, these are all of the various attributes that you can use with any type of HTML element. So there's an anchor element. So you can actually link with an anchor tag uh, to a particular element within the page. So you can use an anchor to do that. 
Um, you can autofocus a particular element, so like a form, for example, when the page loads. Uh, you can use these data dash attributes to add additional information and context. It's very helpful for working with JavaScript if you're not using a uh, JavaScript framework like React or Angular or Vue. And there's a whole bunch of other ones. Here's the ID, and each one of these you can click on it. And notice for ID, the ID is a global attribute that defines an identifier, which must be unique in the whole document. Okay, so it doesn't have to be unique across your whole entire web page or web application, but for the information that is rendered, it needs to be unique uh, for the browser to recognize it as valid. Now, it's not gonna break if it's not, uh, but it's just considered bad practice. And if you are trying to do anything with styles or scripting and you're referencing that uh, ID, it's not gonna know what to do because it's expecting there to only be one. So you can see there is a lot of other attributes that we can take a look at. Another common one that you'll see a lot is going to be class. This allows you to specify the name of a CSS style that you want to apply to a particular element. So for example, you can see here, this paragraph has a class of note and a class of editorial. And this is actually being used to render this in a different color and a different font. So if we take a look at the CSS, it's gonna be out of scope for this video, but just so you can see, we have these class selectors here. So we have this dot editorial, which basically means any element that has this class on it, go ahead and apply this styling. And we can see, also the same thing for the note. So the font style is gonna be italic and the weight's going to be bold. And we can see that inside of the class, there's the note style. And you can have multiple styles per class, uh, per, per class attribute. So we're gonna do the note style and then also the editorial style. And the editorial style sets the background to that pink color and then gives a little bit of padding, uh, 10 pixels of padding to be specific. And so this is the space on the inside of the element to push the content away from the edges. All right, so this is not a course on CSS, but just so you can kind of see uh, what these various attributes do and how you can use them. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different attributes that you can use, and you can click into each one and see information about what that attribute does and how to use it. So there's a lot of information inside of the MDN web docs. So I definitely recommend poking around and just kind of figuring out where things are. So that way, when you need to reference this documentation, uh, you know exactly where to look. So Google search usually takes you right where you need to go, but I do recommend bookmarking this site and referring back to it as needed. As web technologies continue to evolve, this is going to be your go-to resources for learning about what's new, what is available uh, to use, what's currently in development, things like that. So it's an invaluable resource. So I recommend bookmarking it and referring back to it whenever you need to. All right, and that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you like this video and found this information valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna be learning a lot more about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and pretty much everything else in between. So if that's what you're into, I would love to have you along for the journey. So until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.